911 emergency. What are you reporting? Yeah, we're in a, we're in a Lexus. Uh, we're I'm, I'm sorry, your cell phone's cutting out. We're going north 125. Mm-hmm. And our accelerator's stuck. I'm sorry? Our accelerator's stuck. We're on 125 and we're in Okay, northbound 125. Where are you passing? We are passing, uh, where are we passing? We're, we're, we're going 120, Mission Gorge. We're in, we're in trouble. We can't, well, there's no brakes. Okay. And freeway half mile. Okay, and you don't have the ability to like turn the vehicle off or anything. We're approaching the intersection. We're approaching the intersection. Okay. We're approaching the intersection. Hold on. Praise. Praise. A few months before the crash, in Toyota headquarters, two managers, Akira Takahachi and Hachiru Nakamura, are conversing about pending lawsuits. Another one. Again. That's the fourth one this year. If we lose any of those lawsuits we'll have to pay millions. Our jobs are on the line. Those greedy people are sin us for millions, even though the real damages were just tiny accidents. We're not gonna pay a dime. I have a way out of this. Tell the factory to manufacture a couple of models where the floor mats cause this acceleration issue. And we will present this as the actual issue behind the accidents. Great thinking. That way we can blame the people for getting their flare mounts stuck. We can even recall a few models just for show, and we still would be saving billions on lawsuits. Diane, good evening to you. We have just learned tonight from the police officers on scene that the passengers in the Lexus were Mr. Sailor and off-duty California Highway Patrol officer, his wife, Cleof, and their daughter Mahila as well as his brother-in-law Chris Lastrella. We also learned something else, seconds before their car burst into flames, Mr. Lastrella was on the phone with a 911 operator where he told him that the car accelerator was stuck, now this won't be the first time a vehicle made by the Japanese automaker Toyota Motor Corporation is said to have a stuck accelerator, in fact, thousands of Toyota made cars had been driven into trees on straight roads, or plunged into rivers and off cliffs resulting with people getting hurt or killed. We haven't heard anything yet from Toyota on this matter. However, I as well as other reporters from other news networks have received an anonymous email containing internal memos, from within the Toyota Corporation. These memos are proof of the managers and the executives misstating facts and withholding information from the public. They've cleverly deceived the courts into thinking that the problem is mechanical when they knew the real reason for the sudden acceleration in their cars is electronic problems. Reporting from scene and keeping you updated, Nancy Lawrence. Right after the accident, Jim Lentz, the CEO of Toyota Motor Sales, tries to explain some justifications during a press release. We are confident that no problems exist in our electronic throttle systems and our vehicles, and that we have done extensive testing on this system. And we have never found a malfunction that caused an intended acceleration. This is CNN Breaking News. Following the recent events related to the accident caused by Toyota's unintended acceleration, and after last week's press release of Toyota's CEO, Takeshi Akiyamada, executive vice president and chief engineer, said in his prepared statement submitted to the Senate Energy, Commerce, and Transportation Committee. I want to be absolutely clear, as a result of our extensive testing, we do not believe sudden unintended acceleration because of a defect in our ETCS has ever happened. We have testing data that confirms its reliability for all the markets in which we trade worldwide. In fact, there was not a single case where we could identify that the ETC defect was the cause of the unwanted or unintended acceleration. Meanwhile, a few days later, Senior Toyota electronics engineer, Takashi Ogawa, in contrast to what was previously declared, stated after being questioned by House investigators the tests cannot affirm that UA cannot occur. It may be hard to understand, but there is no particular or special testing that would directly prove that there is no unintended acceleration. Instead, the engineers demonstrate UA prevention by cobbling together proof through testing under all conceivable conditions and to confirm it is correctly realized as a design. Within Toyota's quarters right after the accident was reported, the translator of Toyota's confidential documents, Miss Betsy Benjaminson, is on the phone, with the engineer, Mr. Yoshi Ono, who is anonymously providing information about the electronic system issues. 
This would not be the first conversation they had. They already talked about the issues and the engineer helped clarify some details about the documents she had. Hello Mr. Ono. I'm assuming you heard of the leak. Yes. Um, yes I have. Well, I... I would like to thank you, if... Miss Benjaminson. It wasn't me. I did not release any information to be thanked. Look, Miss Benjaminson. I know that mistakes were made in the design but this wasn't meant to happen, we couldn't foresee this happening. You must understand that we never intended to harm anyone. That's exactly what I've called to talk about. Toyota has insisted that there are no issues with the electronic system and that they haven't informed the public about the danger this might cause. I mean a Tundra accelerating on its own and smashing a garage door could hardly be explained by mechanical problems. But that didn't cost any lives, Mr. Ono. Today, just a few hours ago, unintended acceleration strikes again, killing four people in California. We can't hold on to our silence anymore, I I. I can't have all this on my conscience. Neither can I, but what can we do? I've tried to get the management to make the right decision but they don't seem to acknowledge what kind of harm this is causing. With all due respect, but is that it? Is that the farthest you're prepared to take it? Four people died today, no. A family died today. Because of this, there must be something we can do. I was thinking. About going public. Mr. Ono. Please listen. There couldn't be a better time to do so. We can send the reporters an anonymous email to explain what's really going on. But, but my job. If we get caught I'll lose my job. Hell. If Toyota sued independent experts who claim that unintended acceleration is caused by malfunctions of the electronics system, what would they do to me? Ms. Benjaminson nodded. She knows that Mr. Ono is right and that that her plans will endanger their reputations and careers, but what about other people's lives? As she was about to politely end the phone call to give Mr. Ono time to think about her suggestion, Mr. Ono seized the pause. You know what? You're right. I can't have this on my conscience either, I'll send the email. Anonymously of course. That's very brave of you, Mr. Ono, you're doing the right thing. You're not in this alone. I'm also going public so that Toyota wouldn't just be looking at a whistleblower from the inside. I'm going to send the documents I have to every reporter, court judge involved in this. We should put in mind that even if Toyota will oppose to any accusation, we should persevere to achieve our goal since the moment we discovered the truth, revealing it to the public became our duty. Well, Miss Benjaminson. I hope this will force them into fixing the problem. I do too, Mr. Ono. I do too. I guess this is it. I'll call you in the upcoming days. Bye. Ready? 3, 2, 1, go. Diane, good morning to you. We have just learned that Toyota settled a new A-class action lawsuit for $1.3 billion and admitted wrongdoing. In fact, after hundreds of accidents, some of which involved death of mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, children and entire families, the company decided to acknowledge its responsibility towards those sacrificed lives. It is now implicitly declaring that all previous press releases, testimonies, statements from executives were manipulations and falsified facts misleading stakeholders and the public. Toyota therefore has to bear the consequences of the sloppiness of some engineers, the carelessness of some managers, and most importantly the valuation of the human life in terms of currency. As executives prefer to avoid any trouble accompanying the revelation of the truth by assigning false reasons to the incidents that occurred, and hence neglected the right of people to be fully informed about the products they might be willing to buy. Now, I hope this was a lesson to Toyota and to all other companies. Reporting life and keeping you updated, Nancy Lawrence. Back to you Diane.